Yeah, that would happen. All right, so distance rate and time. The first distance rate and time problem we're going to be looking at is the delayed departure. It's a delayed departure because one vehicle is going to be leaving before another. Um, yes. So the key points we need to look at are the time differences. So, all right, I'll just put DD for delayed departure. All right, and the formula is rate times time equals rate times time. All right, so we have a container ship, and then we have an aircraft carrier. Okay, so we have a container ship and an aircraft carrier. Um, so what is the rate for the container ship? And let me just back up because when we do distance rate and time problems, my memory aid is line by line and diagram. So that's what you have to do. You have to look at every sentence and you have to diagram as you go along. So how would you do that? Okay. Let's see. So... So if I drew it out, I would draw like a little pier and a ship leaving with a line behind it that says four hours. I wouldn't do like that. Just, I would just stay with the formula. So let me dem oh, okay. so let me just demonstrate. That's the whole reason of remembering the formula. Okay, so rate times time equals rate times time. We'll make one side the container ship. So I'll put CS over here, and then I'll put AC for the aircraft carrier. All right, okay. so... The question states, the container ship left the Donia Pier and traveled north. You could throw it out. An aircraft carrier left four hours later. So, if an aircraft carrier left four hours later, that means that the container ship was rolling four hours already. Right? Uh, the container ship left four hours ago. Okay. Listen to what I'm saying. A container ship left this pier yeah. and traveled north. Yes. An aircraft carrier left four hours later. So that means the container ship has been rolling for four hours already. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to be clear. Okay. The aircraft carrier is, uh, it left four hours later, but it's leaving at 30 miles per hour. So that is the aircraft carrier's rate. So I'll yes. put R, 30 under R. Um, after traveling for eight hours, the aircraft carrier caught up. So how long, how, what's the total time that the aircraft carrier have been traveling? Um, 12. No, aircraft carrier. It's important you read the lines. That's why I say line by line, read every line and diagram. An aircraft. Does that count for eight hours? I'm sorry, sir? Is it eight hours? Eight hours, okay. All right. So how much total time has the container ship been traveling? That would be 12. Yeah, there you go. And what was the container ship's average speed? So that's X. We don't know. So I would rearrange this so it looks more math friendly. Uh, three times eight is 24, add to zero to 40. X equals two zero twenty miles per hour. And that is the answer to the question. After you answer the question, you have to ask yourself, did I answer the question? So yes, we did. Okay. So we understood that this was a delayed departure. Rate times time equals rate times time. Yes. The rate of the container ship was unknown, but we knew that the container ship rolled for 12 hours. The rate of the aircraft carrier was given 30 miles per hour, and it traveled eight hours. That was also given. Um, 12x equals 240. 240 divided by 12 equals 20. So that was 20 miles per hour. That was the answer to our question. Okay. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Good, 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 good. Now, 
Um, number two. Did I send you a number two? Yes, I got number two. Okay. All right. I'd like you to read that out, please. So a cruise ship made a trip to Guam and back. The trip there took 12 hours and the trip back took nine hours. It averaged 20 kilometers per hour on the return trip. Find the average speed of the trip there. Okay. So what type of distance rate and time problem is this, sir? This one was the round trip. This one was the round. All right. This was the round trip. Now, for the round trip, for the round trip, we could do it two ways. I want you to I want to introduce you to one way of doing this. Okay. All right. And hold on. Okay, so for the round trip problem. All right, um, point A to point B, all right, back, D, R, T. So distance rate and time up top, distance rate and time on the bottom. Now there's another way that you have to do this if we don't have all the factors that we need, but it looks like we're good to go from what I'm reading. All right, so a cruise ship made went from Guam and back. So we have alpha, Point A, point B. You can put Guam. You can put Guam here. Start whatever. But A to B goes to Guam okay. and back. The trip there took twelve hours. So under time, I'm gonna put twelve hours. The trip back took nine hours. So under the trip back, nine hours. It averaged twenty kilometers per hour on the return trip. So that's where the rate goes: two zero kilometers per hour. And they're asking, find the average speed of the trip there. So we're looking for the top R. Now, the reason why I have a DRT up top, because that, that, that shows the leg going out. And the reason why I have a DRT on the bottom is that's the leg coming back. Now, okay. distance equals rate times time. So if we have any two of these pieces, we can find a third. So based on what we have, we have a leg going there. We have a leg coming back. Can... Is there anything else we can plug in based on what the question has given us? Find the average speed. Let's see. Back to that. Is there anything else we can add based on the paragraph? It doesn't say any more information, but we do have the rate and time on the way back. And what is rate and time equal to? The um, the D the distance. distance very good. So, so we have the distance, rate, and time for the bottom. Well, we don't have rate and time. What's the distance? Twenty times nine, so one hundred and eighty. Mm -hmm. And for your rapid math, just think of nine times two is eighteen. Then add zero. Yes. One eight zero kilometers. So if the distance from B to A is 180 kilometers, what's the distance from A to B? It wouldn't be the same, would it? If you walk to that door behind you and then walk back to your chair, would that be the same distance? It would. Yeah. So I'm willing to bet. Okay. <laughs> I just, cause that's a three hour difference. It's okay, buddy. Yeah. And who I says it's three hours? Who says it's a three, who says it's a three hour? Well, because nine and 12, it depends on the rates. If the rate is slower, it doesn't matter. The distance is going to be the same. It just took more time to get there. Okay. All right. Okay. So based on what we have here, can we find our rate on the trip there? Yes. Okay, how are we going to do that, sir? 80 divided by 12. Divided by 12? Wouldn't it be the distance divided by the time? Yeah, 
Yeah, but you said something. What did you say? Your numbers, you said. I Oh, I didn't say that. I just said distance divided by time. Oh, I, I, thought, I, heard 80, I thought I heard 80 divided by 12. Yes, that's what I said. Okay, it's not 80 divided by 12. It's 180 divided by 12. Oh, that's, I'm sorry, yes. It's okay. So we come here with our long division, 180 divided by 12. 12 goes into 1 how many times? Zero. 12 goes into 18 how many times? Once. Once. 12 times 1 is 12. We subtract. We get a 6. Then we drop a 0. How many times is 12 going to 60? Five. Five times. So the trip there, the rate was 15 kilometers per hour. And we ask ourselves, when we complete the question, did we answer the question? Yes, we did. Yeah. Find the average speed of the trip there. 15 kilometers per hour. Right. Okay, let's go into another one, sir. All right. Um, two more here. I'm going to give them both to you. But as you flow up and down your timeline, these, is, these are what you need to be practicing. Okay. Okay, read the question aloud for me, sir. It says, Scott left the airport and traveled towards the train station. Three hours later, Castell left traveling at 50 miles per hour in an effort to catch up to Scott. After traveling for two hours, Castell finally caught up. What was Scott's average speed? Okay. So first we have to identify what type of distance rate and time problem we're looking at. So it's, this one's a delayed departure again. And what is the formula for delayed departure? RT equals RT. And we have to understand that there's probably nine times out of ten, since it is a delayed departure, there's going to be a a, a time adjustment. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. All right. So Scott left the airport, traveled towards the train station. Throw that away. That's garbage. We don't need it. Three hours later, so I'll make this the Scott side, I'll make this the Castell side. But three hours later, when you hear three hours later, that means that this guy's already been traveling for three hours. When yes. you hear three hours later, Castell left traveling at 50 miles per hour. So his rate is 50. And note how everything falls right under the formula. Time, mm -hmm. rate, all right. After traveling two hours, he caught up. So that belongs to this side. So we plugged in our rate and time for Castell. And we have, uh, we don't have, we have time, but we don't have total time. All right. And so he, Scott was rolling for three hours and then the two that he got caught up. So he's actually a five. You see how that worked? Yes. Okay, because Scott left the airport three hours later, Castell left. And then he was caught in an additional two hours. Mm -hmm. So he was driving for a total of five hours. So let's make this math friendly. 5x is equal to 100. X is equal to 20. So uh, Scott was rolling at 20 miles per hour. Yeah, 20 miles per hour. And at the end, you have to ask yourself, did I answer the question? You look at the question. What was Scott's average speed? We look at Scott's average speed. We're done with it. Okay. Okay, let's examine number four.
Read it aloud for me, please, sir. Um, Jose traveled to the town hall and back. The trip there took five hours and the trip back took four hours. He averaged 35 kilometers per hour on their turn trip. Find the average speed of the trip there. What type of distance rate and time problem is this? A round trip. And we're going to DRT arrow out, DRT arrow back. Now, you're going to tell me what to plug in this time. And you're going to tell okay. me how to execute this problem. So, um, on the arrow there, I just did B and A, like the last problem. Okay, so, that's fine. I just understood they were there, but, you know, okay. <laughs> no worries. Um, so... For above the arrows, it says, well, okay, so I'll do it like how you did it. You said, read each line by line. So it says, Jose traveled to the town hall and back. There are your so, arrows. Yeah, those are the arrows. The trip there took five hours. Where's five so going? Up, up top, under um, time. Go. So it's five hours. And the trip back took four hours. So that goes under the bottom T. Uh-huh. Um, it says he averaged 35 kilometers per hour on the return trip. Where's so that going? the rate for the bottom. Good. And then it says for the average speed of the trip, as if it's fine, the average speed for the trip there. No. So the um, equation for this type of problem is D equals R times T. Okay, that's, that's just something I wanted you to understand to make sure that you had the full breadth of oh. it. At this point, we got to plug in information, right? Yes. Okay. So from the equation, or from the problem, we have all the information. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, we have all the information that we need. Besides, we have to do for the bottom, we have to multiply um, 35 kilometers per hour times four hours to get the distance, which is one hundred and forty. One hundred and forty what? One hundred and forty kilometers. Good. I always want my units. Very good. Now and then. Now what? Um, well, like the last problem, assuming that it's 140 kilometers back, that it was probably 140 kilometers there since it's a round trip. I would agree with you, sir. And then we'd also put 140 kilometers up top as well. And now that we have the distance and the time for the trip there, we can um, divide the two. So it would be... 140 divided by 5, and 5 can't go into 1, so that's a 0, but 5 can go into 14 twice, mm -hmm. which gives us a remainder of 4, and then you bring down the 0, which makes it 40, and then 5 goes into 48 times. So then your rate there would be 28 kilometers per hour. We got a mathematical genius on our hands. Well, at least better. <laughs> at least better. Ooh, you're starting to get the Kino vision. <laughs> and then we're not done yet. We've got to figure out if we answer the question. There you go. Not. There you go. That's the closer. That's the closer. And it says find the average speed of the trip there. And we just found the rate for the trip there, which is 28 kilometers per hour. So we did answer the question. Outstanding. Man, you make me proud. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's the next question? Um, I do not have another question. Uh, what, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. 
You just sent me number three and okay, four. Okay, okay, okay. I got you, I got you. <laughs> I fell on my head a lot when I was a kid. Oh, no. My mom pays people to watch me. <laughs> they want to raise next year. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'd like you to read, analyze the question, and I'd like you to tell me what type of question you're looking at, sir. Okay. So it says, Perry left school driving towards the lake one hour before JD. JD drove in the opposite direction, going six miles per hour slower than Perry for one hour, after which time they were um, 174 miles apart. What was Perry's speed? So this is, um, would this be considered still a delayed departure since JD left an hour after Perry? No. Okay. okay. This is the next format that we're getting into. This is called okay. an expansion. This is an expansion because two vehicles are going in opposite directions. And the formula for okay. expansion is... RT of one vehicle plus RT of the second vehicle is equal to the distance that we're trying to establish how long it's going to take them to get to come, you know, get apart. So I will take the lead on this one. Sure. Okay. You know, like all my other formulas, it's all plug and play. Once you understand that this is an expansion, RT plus RT equals distance. So when you're sitting in a testing center and you're analyzing like, damn, I got a distance rate and time problem. And you, you see one vehicle going one way, one vehicle going the other way, and then a distance. Automatically, the expansion formula should come to mind. And so your brain should immediately go to RT plus RT equals distance. That's what you should write down first. Don't think about anything else. And then you plug and play. So from this point, Perry, so this first guy will put Perry and who's the other guy, Jay? All right. So... Perry left the driving school driving towards Lake One one hour before JD. You read Perry yeah. left the driving school. He drove. He's driving towards Lake One before JD. One hour before JD. What does that suggest about Perry? What's that telling you about time? Because we got to plug this information in. So Perry, so Perry left one hour before JD. Yes. Who gets that hour? Perry. Perry gets that hour. So we got one hour for Perry. So we've analyzed sentence one. Sentence two. JD moving in the opposite direction. That tells me it's an expansion. But he's going six miles per hour slower than Perry. Okay. So his rate is going to be X minus six in parentheses. And Perry's rate is going to be X. This represents that JD is rolling six miles per hour slower than Perry. Yeah. Okay, but he's got power. Now, how much time does JD roll? Uh, it says... Um, it doesn't say... Wait. Yeah, it does. For an hour. Like, also, watch it, sucker. Like, watch it, sucker. That's this old, old, <laughs> old TV show. She's like, watch it, sucker. Yes, it does. So, JD rolls for one hour, right? Yeah. So how many how many hours was Perry traveling? Two. Good job. All right. So notice how, and then hold on, equals 174. Everything in the formula came down, didn't it? Yes. And, and, and at this point, I do not care about your speed. Nobody's ever gotten slower at math with me in over 10 years. I just haven't seen it. Oh, uh, Keno, I'm talking these problems out slower. No, they like... And I know this, this, this is just because we're in explana explanation mode. It's moving slow <laughs> because I have to stop and explain. But when you get test ready, you will fly through this problem. So let's make it. So we have our formula, rate X times 2. Rate X minus 6 because it's 6 miles per hour slower or whatever, kilometers per hour, whatever it is. It's miles. And then time, 1 hour. Now let's make it math friendly. 2X 
plus, this is just going to be x minus 6 because 1 distributed n is going to be x minus 6. 1, 7, 4. We're going to combine like terms. Ready? Yes. 2x plus x is what? 3x. And when the 6 jumps the equal sign and becomes positive, what are we going to have on that side? 180. 180. Good job. Then we're going to divide by 3. And what is 18 divided by 3 is what? 6. And then we'll add to 0. So don't sit there in 180 and in the bracket. You don't have to do that. 18 divided mm -hmm. by 3, 6, add to 0. And you're done with mm -hmm. it. All right. So x is equal to 60, which means parity speed is 60 and JD speed is 54. Now, did we answer the question? Um, what was Perry's speed? So it was 60 mm -hmm. miles per hour. But you have to understand if they asked you for JD's speed, it would be 54 because it's X minus 6. Yes. Okay. All right, I am going to give you some additional questions. Sorry, I uh, just got a little brain freeze there. So yeah, I'm sending you additional questions. And um, when are you going to be available again? Um, or you have you need to look at your schedule. I can pull it up real quick. I work. Um, do 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 do. You don't do Saturday and Sunday, correct? Yeah, I do. Oh, you do? Okay. Um, I mean, I could do one tomorrow afternoon. I'm off Monday and Tuesday. Okay. Um, and Wednesday and Thursday, I could do after 4.30. Okay, let's... Uh, you said Sunday you work, right? Yes, sir. Monday, when are you available? I'm off Monday and I'm off Tuesday all day. All right, so let's say Monday afternoon. Monday afternoon. Mm hmm Okay. Uh, 2 Eastern. 2 Eastern. So that's 1. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. 2 Eastern. So I want you to write 2 Eastern on our timeline. Write down 2 Eastern because that is the okay. last line I need to see. That's the last line I need to see. Um, when I look at your name and I go, hey, when I meet Garrett again, I'll see 2 Eastern. And hey, Monday. Okay. Don't forget Monday. So 2 Eastern Monday. on Monday. Sure. Okay. All right. Really, really good job today. Um, my prescription is for you is long division with decimals. Okay. I noticed that we had some barriers there, long division with decimals. Um, and I want you to understand that your target goal, every math problem you see, your target goal is 60 seconds. You're not there yet, but I'm just saying that is your target goal. Right now, I'm only concerned with your process. Okay. Your process, if your process is good, when you do speed up, you're going to stay with that process. You're not going to be, boom, it's called the law of primacy. Primacy. Mm -hmm. The things that we learn first um, are, they have a lasting impression. So that's why I'm concerned about your structure, not your speed. Okay. All right. Um, and that's it, man. Perfect. And then... um. Are we, if you're available, are we able to do more than one a week? Yeah, yeah. Because, like I said, I want to try getting back up into speed and getting this stuff knocked out pretty quick so I don't have to worry about the tests as much anymore. Um, I mean, I know there's still a lot that we need to cover. Um, and C.C. Colston, um, I see your message. You can go ahead and uh, ask me any questions you want about the SIFT. Right now, you can type them in on the uh, message board. Uh, 
or we could Skype directly. But yeah, since I already have this up, I would like to it'd be beneficial for my channel if you typed in some questions. I'm sorry, go say again. Oh, I was just saying um, if we can do more than one a week because I'm going to get caught up on this stuff again and get to the point where I can get closer and closer to taking the test. Yeah, yeah. I remember, on day, I remember on day one you said that you recommend like a good like solid like two or three months. Yeah. I know I haven't done a consecutive solid two or three months, yeah. but that first month in September with all those math stuff, I did them today mm -hmm. and I knocked them all out like 20 seconds of the problem without looking at anything. So I got all those down pretty good. Um, and I know there's a lot more to cover, there's a lot more sections because there's still reading comprehension and mm -hmm. mechanics and gravity and like all that yeah. stuff. But so I definitely yeah. want to try. I, I yeah, try we, can, we can definitely get a couple test. days in a week. We can get definitely do okay. that. All right. So and even if I have to do longer sessions, I can sign up for those longer ones too. Okay. All right. All right. So I will see you. I plan on seeing you Monday afternoon. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Sure. All right. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Um, CC, I'm back. Um, go ahead and um, yeah, type in any questions you want. Um, I'd like to, because since you're here for the SIFT, um, I'd like to talk about the SIFT, if I may. You know I love to talk. <laughs> and hopefully you're, subscri you're subscribed to my channel. <laughs> I guess so many people I get on Skype, they'd be like, yeah, um, hey, Akino, I love your videos. Are you subscribed? No, I'm not subscribed. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, CC. That's crazy. I'm thinking about uh, Drake now, a Drake song. When he'd be like, CC on the beat. You don't make beats for Drake, do you? <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I'm waiting for you, CC. Um, what are some of your questions? And since I'm on the sift already. Okay, there's a chat. There's a chat window at the bottom. And you know what? Try to chat. If not, then I'm just going to bring you in right on this one. So if you just, uh, there's a damn wireless keyboard. That's the thing about wireless keyboards. You can't find them where they at. Back in the old days, you just like type. You're going to have to Skype me. And that is the Skype request. That's where you would send a request on the message board. And we can do a live chat right now. Since I'm here and you're here and um, it'll be, it'd be some good information for the channel. Um while you are getting that Skype together or whatever, what I will tell you, on this on the SIFT, uh, I have a 100% pass rate. A 100% pass rate. Um, I have never, ever, ever had anybody fail the SIFT on me. Um, and last year, 20 people SIFT training with me. Um, only 19 went to flight school, though. And the reason why is because the one out of that 20 actually failed a medical. So that's not my fault. I can help you prep for the test. I can help you pass the test. I can tell you about aerodynamics, physics, mechanics, and all that. And even flying a helicopter, but I have nothing to do with the physical. So one thing that you do want to do before you invest all this time and energy is to um, make sure that... Um, you are medically qualified. Now, how do you do that, Kino? Well, I'll put this in the uh, in the chat um, because this will help you avoid a lot of um, drama. Okay, you need to find an AME, which is an aviation medical examiner. All right, an AME and 
also when you talk to them you tell them that you want a class one a class one physical all right so you you can find a you could google aviation medical medical examiner or if there's a local uh if there's a local airport near you like we have small airports all around us more than you know and if you don't know you can go to skyvector.com shout out to the guys at skyvector.com almost shut you guys out in every video because i love skyvector.com i actually use it when i'm really flying um but yeah you go to the aviation medical examiner and they will uh or sorry local airport they can get you get your list of local examiners or you can google aviation medical examiner and put your zip code in there and you can find the um the uh the closest one you don't need to go there with your medical insurance uh it depends on um you pay cash or check or money order, I guess. Um, but you pay, they'll take you in the back room, they'll take your blood pressure. If you're over 40, they'll put you on an uh, EKG machine for a little bit and um, analyze like your heart rate and all that stuff. And they'll put like the little leads on you and stuff like that and everything. They'll check your vision. If your vision needs to be corrected, um, um, they will tell you at that point if you're not 2020. Now, I knew a guy, and I'll just say his first name, Matt. It could be anybody. I, I knew a guy, Matt, back in the day. Um, he actually had LASIK surgery, and um, and uh, he corrected his vision to 2020. I don't know where it was at before then. This was like 20 years ago when LASIK was early, was was new, like brand new. Or what wasn't brand new? It was out for a while, and the army started. The United States Army started accepting pilots with uh, correct division with LASIK. But I would talk to your recruiter. Don't you know? Hold on. Make sure this is a uh, not CC. Okay, it is not. And CC, if you can't get through, um. For some reason through uh, Skype, just let me know. Because now I've been sitting here talking and running my mouth, and now I want to talk to you now. Okay, that's good. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, LASIK is possible. There's another corrective uh, surgery also that, that uh, I'm not going to talk about because I, I can't. I know LASIK because I know a pilot. He's currently Air National Guard pilot. He was active duty, then he went to the guard, and, um, you know, um, no, it's all good if your wife flies slow, CC, just, and if we don't get the Skype connection, I am interested in some of your connect your questions, if I can untie my tongue. So, yeah, uh, I actually took the AFAST. Um, when I was, when I was looking to, when I was thinking about becoming a pilot, and I just, I took... I took every test. <laughs> I took the AFOQT, the ASTBE, but I was just kind of filling my way out because I was like a, a junior in high school. I was a JROTC cadet. And then I went into Air Force ROTC in college and I was just filling my options out. And I actually took and I passed the AFAST test, um, which was what this test was before it was the SIFT test. And it was a, like a lot harder because you had to like move. All right, hold on, I think this is CC, y'all. Is this Hello? CC? Is this CC? Yes, it's me. What's up, <laughs> CC? <laughs> Hello, this is Thomas. This is great for the channel. So. About the sim testing. Good. I've been looking for months. Study my butt off. Mm -hmm. Have you taken the test yet? Oh, no, sir, I have it. Very good. Do not take it. Now, are there? Are you coming up on age uh, limitations? How old are you? I'm 20. I'll be 21 again. Oh, that's awesome. So you have lots of time. Do lots. not take this test. And I, this is for my subscribers. Do not take this test. 90% of people that take this test are not ready. 
Right. Unless you are a mechanical or an electrical engineer, I've only met, in 10 years I've been preparing people for this test, I've only met three that were ready to take it, where we sat down and talked, and I was like, yo, you don't need me, take it. And they took right. it and they passed. Based on, um, you know, just a couple of assessments that I did with them. I mean, they had been watching my videos for a minute, and then, you know, so... All right, CC, CC, you got me. So yeah, see, I'm not one of those weirdo YouTubers, man. You could actually get in contact with me. Awesome. Could, you, could you confirm that for me, CC? You were on the chat, on the on the live, and you know, you just like, hey, I want to talk to you. So I am accessible. I was told you were on. I was just looking at your videos, actually, and I was like, oh, you know what? This one says live. Let me go ahead and click that. And his attention really quick. I don't know if this man will respond, but I'm like, <laughs> I respond to everybody. But, oh, I'm so happy too. Even the negative so, feedback. Even the negative. I didn't even see any negative. That's yeah, crazy. I get it. I get it from time to time. They'll be like, oh, well, you could have did the problem this way. I'm like, okay, well, make your own YouTube channel. <laughs> okay, so. I, feedback, so. All right, ask um, some questions, man. You got. All right, so really quick, I'm having some difficulties with uh, the material specifically. Uh, I have no problem with looking up what it is that I'm, uh, the, the section. Like, for example, I'm sorry, I have a cold, by the way. It's if fine. I to take it out. That is I'm a, sorry if it's I, uh, a human bodily function. I understand. So uh, as far as certain topics, I have this book right here. I don't know if you can see this. I can see this it. It's a trivium. I, okay. I I actually I'm gonna say I dislike trivium. I'm not gonna say I H A T E trivium. I dislike trivium. Trivium is really? uh, and I'll, I'm gonna say, say, let me say allegedly because you gotta say allegedly or people come after you with uh. No, honestly, from what I've seen, um, when because you have to understand, I've been doing this for ten years. Okay. And every time I send somebody to take the sift. We debrief afterwards, and I ask them, what kind of questions did you saw? They say, oh, I saw word problems. I saw percentages. I saw square roots. I saw exponents. I saw uh, linear equations, system of equations, mixture problems, right? Uh -huh. And um, from what, in my 10 years experience in Trivium, I hate to say this because you guys are going to be like, <gasps> how dare you talk about our book? Um. I don't think it's the best one out there. I'll say that there is useful information in there. So yeah, not even to say I hate the book or anything like that. I won't I won't crap on the book. I'm not crapping on the book, but I will say that I don't believe that that's the best one out there. In my 10 years, in, in, in my experience of preparing people for this test, I would not say it's the best one. I think that they've come up with a lot of creative stuff, some really difficult problems. Um, uh -huh. But uh, you could get a better book. You definitely, you definitely need that. That is the Rotor yeah. Flying Handbook. You definitely that, need that. that and, the, and the first seven maybe. chapters, the first seven oh. chapters, you need to know. How long have you been? How long have you been reading it, CC? Um, I got back from Korea in last year in October, so pretty much since then. And then I had a pregnancy. So I, pretty much throughout my whole pregnancy, I've been looking through this one. Did you have a boy or a girl? A uh, girl. <laughs> How old is she now? She is six months. It's crazy Ooh. time to fly. Yeah. So now that I've been shaped to actually put in a, a flight packet, I'm starting up my study again. And this stuff is, it's, it's honestly like, I'm, I'm skimming through it pretty well. It's just that uh, when it comes to specific topics, mm -hmm. like, Let's say uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the air, the general aerodynamics chapter, chapter two. Let's talk I'm about it. Some, okay, so with fit, with the physics part of the whole, I'm having some problem understanding things. Like for example, I'm looking at uh, axis of rotation mm -hmm. uh, and an angle and a uh, chord line. I'm having some difficulties understanding how that plays on an air floor, how, how that plays. Okay, well, let me clear it up. Uh, and the angle of that, excuse me. Let me clear it up for you. Uh, all right. Let me get my notes. Sorry. All right. <laughs> you see my little miniature helicopter here? Yeah. 
Uh, if it, a little lower, I can't see it. Yeah, oh, yeah, we're, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're another okay. camera. I'm sorry. All right, so we have our little helicopter here. Okay, now aircraft operate on three axes. When we say plural, we're just talking about one. We say axis of rotation, but when we're talking right. about multiple, we say axes of rotation because I don't want you going around talking to somebody and then sounding all jacked up. Like she don't know what she talked about. So axis, singular, axes, plural. Okay. okay, so there's three axes of rotation. Now, I think it might be more... Uh, uh, okay, actually, you know what? I got you on Skype. So I can do some magical stuff. Now, if, if you were training with me, we would be establishing a timeline. Now, I want okay. you to just... Hold on one second. Three axes of rotation. I'm talking to my computer. Okay. According to Ace Fitness, just as there are three places. And I'm looking for the images. Okay. So I'm about to send you an image on the timeline and let me know when you can see the image. Oh. It's coming. I just said the actual thing. I just. It's okay. It's all right. I think you, uh, oh, I didn't even, uh, okay, so there we go. Paste and then go. Okay, let me know when you see the image. All right. Okay, so there are three axes of rotation. Now, you see an airplane, but the helicopter makes the same movements, okay? It just uses different control surfaces. So the first one you see is a line going vertical. This is called the vertical axis. And we yaw like you turn in your car about the vertical axis. So the helicopter uses the anti-torque rotors to move the right. nose left and right. So you would actually be making this movement with your foot pedals. All right. Right. All right. So we yaw about the vertical. So that is the movement. We yaw. And I'll just abbreviate this vertical. Then you have what we call the longitudinal. And this is three dimensions, so that shouldn't have went like that, sorry. So that's pretty much like the x-axis. Well, hold on. There we go. This is called the longitudinal, and I'll abbreviate eat that. That's the longitudinal axis. The longitudinal axis, imagine a, a dowel or a rod going from the tail through the nose. So what happens is the helicopter, we use the cyclic to roll. This is what we do. We roll about the longitudinal axis. So that okay. is the movement. You have the axis and then the movement. We roll on the longitudinal axis and then we have the lateral axis that goes like that. So that's what you're looking at in that image that I saw, the three dimensions. That is the lateral. And the lateral axis we pitch with the cyclic, nose up, nose down, nose up, nose down. When the helicopter takes off, he pushes, he, he, he gets into a hover. He or she gets into a hover. They add a little collective and they push forward in the cyclic. The, the nose tilts forward and we get our translational lift and it moves forward. When the helicopter slows down, the helicopter pulls the nose back to allow some of it. So there's a little bit of aerodynamic braking action. So he or she pulls back on the cyclic with a nose high attitude. And then they kind of come down, 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 and then boom. So that is pitching about the lateral axis. So we have the vertical, we yaw about the vertical, we roll about the longitudinal axis, and we pitch along or about the vertical axis. Continue. CC, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, you got all quiet. You got all quiet. Now you asked about the chord line. If we took a rotor blade and we sliced it, you would have a cross section that might look like this. Right. Okay. I can understand that. Okay. So we have what we call an airfoil. That's what this is. An airfoil is any device that's used to produce lift. All right. Right. So that is an airfoil, but we have airfoil terminology. We have a leading edge. Okay. 
and we have a trailing edge. And then over the trailing edge is where lift is produced, right? When the air is not over the top. not it's over. We have a cord line. Hold on, we have a cord line, which is an okay. imaginary line from the leading edge to the trailing edge. We have an upper camber. Oh, oh, yeah, yes. And a lower camber. It's just we have to have it's just curve, upper curve, lower curve. But we have to have fancy names because we're pilots and we can't right. have other people just know what the, what's the upper camber. Yeah, you you yeah. don't you wouldn't get it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Somebody's like, no, you're not you're not a pilot. Get away. You know <laughs> you're not us. <laughs> okay. So that's the airfoil terminology. Leading edge, trailing edge, upper camber, lower camber. Um and then um That, so we need to understand that. Now, another thing that you'll probably get into is the angle of attack. Now, lift is produced by air molecules fly, passing over the wing, uh -huh. the top and the bottom. And due to Bernoulli's principle, uh, we get lift. Um, this can be explained in using a Venturi tube, a tube with a constriction in the middle. You'll also see that in your book. Bernoulli's, yes, I did see that. Okay, so Bernoulli's principle states that for every force, there's an equal opposite force. For every four, no, gosh, that's Sir Isaac Newton's third law of motion. Yes. I'm sorry, I've been up, I've been up all day and I'm a little tired. No, that's cool. fine. <laughs> okay, so Bernoulli's principle: as the velocity of a fluid increases its internal pressure decreases. So if we if we float if we float flo flowed or had air passing or flowing through this tube in the middle at this constriction we would see that the velocity increases and the pressure decreases. Here would be normalized. And so in your picture that you have in your book when the air starts to flow into the tube it might say it might be at 100 miles per hour. Uh -huh. But when it gets here, it's going to jump up to 150 miles per hour. And then when it comes to the open end again, it goes, drops down to 100 miles an hour. Here, the pressure could be 14.7 PSI, pounds per square inch. Okay. But when we get into the middle, it might drop to 7 PSI. And then when we get to this open end, it will go back up to 14 PSI. So that's Bernoulli's principle. If we fl and and Bernoulli, Daniel Bernoulli was he worked with water, but water and air behave the, the same way. They have very similar characteristics as far as flow and pressure goes. So as the velocity of a fluid increases 100 to 150, its internal pressure decreases. So the the speed went up to 150, the pressure dropped to seven, and then open up then it, and then it normalized when it got to the other end now what the heck's that got to do with flying well look what what look, look what fits perfectly in here an airfoil so this describes right. what happens on top of the wing we get negative pressure on the top, positive pressure on the bottom. That's why I was trying to tie in Sir Isaac Newton's third law of motion. And this accounts for about 65% of lift, 60, about 60% 60 of lift. All right. Um, so, yeah, I explained, we talked about the cord line and the axes of rotation. Uh-huh. Let me look for my notes. I know I have two other questions. Okay. Uh, you know, I might have time for one because I have an engagement I got to get to, but. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. About that. No, it's all uh, right. Uh, so I was looking through uh, these terminologies. Uh, Climb and descent. Uh, I guess 
for Clive, it seemed more self-explanatory, but it seems like as I look through the, uh, the definition of Clive and how that has to play on an, on an aircraft, it's kind of dolby at the end. So where it says here, Clive is with an aircraft uh, flight path change from a lower to higher level in altitude. That seems pretty self-explanatory, but then it proceeds to say like things like normal climb and the best rate of climb. I'm starting to kind of bitch bash in my mind. Like, well, I thought I knew the answer. But, okay. Uh, you have yeah. best, you have angle of climb and best rate yeah. of climb. Yeah. Now, all right. V speeds. <laughs> So these are some speeds that you are going to need to be, need to familiar. It's going to be nice. It would be wise if you familiarize yourself uh, with these speeds. Um, so hold on. I'm trying to send you a nice image uh, because uh, any aircraft that you fly, you will have to be familiar with these speeds. All right, so, and I have a beautiful, have you ever taken um, algebra? Yes, and I was good at that, yeah. Okay, so you remember, hold on one second. Do you remember your coordinate plane? Coordinate plane. Your x, your coordinate plane, Cartesian coordinate plane, with your right, y, y axis, x, and y axis. Okay. Right. So right. I want you to think of it like this: If we're starting at the origin, if I go towards x, that's going to be distance away from the origin, and if I go towards y, that is going to give me height or altitude above the origin. Would you agree with that? I agree, yes. Okay, so let's look at VX. This is called the best angle of climb. VX. And V just means velocity and X. So this is the best angle of climb. Angle of climb. VY is called the best rate of climb. If I can spell my word, C I L C L I C L I M B. <laughs> okay. So when the memory aid, when I was a full-time flight instructor, what I, the memory aid I had for this was, okay, best angle of climb. And I would remember which which letter has more angles, the X or Y? The X does. So that's how I memorized that was the best angle of climb. Okay. This climb provides the greatest gain in altitude. Okay. For distance travel forward. So see how I had the distance towards X? You get the uh -huh. you get the most altitude for your distance. That's why I put origin, distance, altitude. I used the coordinate plane VX. Distance away from the origin. So the VX gives you the maximum gain in altitude for distance. All right. Best rate of climb gives you the best altitude for time. Okay. Um, and this is where we want to be at. When you're, when, when you're in a helicopter, you're in what's called a dead man zone when you first, when you first take off, right? And... You know, so let's say you're here and you have some trees or whatever, whatever, whatever. Well, when you first take off in your helicopter, you want to get a certain amount of altitude so that you have enough airflow for if you lose your engine, you can auto rotate and cushion your landing. Uh huh. Okay, so if you're 150 feet in the air, that, that, you may not get as much airflow as you would like. That would probably be a tough landing. But if you get a couple hundred feet, then, you know, you can disengage your clutch and freewheel that main rotor 
and then re-engage it to get that lift to dump because that's what auto rotating is. All right. So not to get off topic, but you want to be at a speed of you want to be at best rate of climb that'll give you the greatest gain in altitude over time. Now, as a fixed wing pilot, it is very near and dear to us because the higher we get, the more time we have in the air if we lose our engines, if we have like a total power loss. So I always climb out at best rate of climb because uh -huh. every second that that engine was at 100% available, I was getting the most altitude I could get out of it. Make sense? Yes and no. I, I kind of blanked out when you were talking about, uh, but that's because I was interested, so I'm going to stick to topic. Uh, when you were talking about all your, uh, the, the example that you used was the X, uh, the VX, excuse me, would mm -hmm. be the best red cl climb. Correct? You get the most altitude at this particular speed over distance. Speed over distance. Okay. And then you get the greatest gain in distance, uh, gain in altitude over time. It's 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 kind of hard to explain. Um, so you start to go, you get the greatest uh, VX, you get the greatest altitude over uh, di distance, right? Mm -hmm. The first go the, the higher, and then for your rate of climb, it'll be the you, VY. Which you get the most over altitude higher. over time. Okay, I, I, I was just trying to cl clarify the two. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. So that's all that is. Any aircraft you fly, you're gonna have a V. You're gonna have V speeds. All right. Please. And I also sent you an image, VX and VY. That makes sense to me if I had the way I had it just said it. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. All righty. Thank you. That kind of sums up the, the, the biggest questions that I had right there. Okay. Well, most people are not prepared for this test. They're not. Oh, no. And, um, you know, if you do need, if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one tutoring or group tutoring, you got you know how to get me directly now so yes just let me know i do group sessions and i do one-on-one -on -one sessions so um i hope that and uh, i'm glad you subscribed to me that made me smile <laughs> i ain't even talk i think you know i had all these questions i'm not subscribed i'll be like word that's like egg on yeah, my face i'll be like i'll be like word for real man all. you just don't do me like that <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. And uh, you, you have the pattern uh, from which you do these uh, videos, right? Um, like yeah, I guess. Yeah, I have a certain format. I, you know. Okay, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure that by the end of, uh, what, fr every Friday, kind of? Mm -hmm. It's a race. I'll make sure I, I'll hit you with a few questions. And I'll, I like to get it really into it. So I'm, I'm probably going to take much of your time, mm -hmm. these questions. Thank you so much. Yeah. Just and just, just so you know, I have a group session every Saturday, Sunday. Every Saturday, okay. Sunday at 5 Eastern. That's right. Got it. Got it. Thank so, you. Yeah. And it is a, a lot. It's a really good, good. Uh, it's a good way to see a lot of questions being answered and flying across and actually be engaged and actually be able to ask questions and things of that nature. So, I'm gonna write that down. Mm -hmm. Every Friday and Saturday, 5 p.m. Eastern. I'm so excited about that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. God, I, 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 I don't mean to grab along, but I'm really excited to finally find somebody with or a group section that I can study with because I've been thinking I know something and I get on the test and bomb it. I promise you. Yeah, and you don't want, if you're not prepared, you do not want to walk into this test. Most recruiters will tell you, oh, just take it, see how you do. But they won't tell you only have two times in your life to take it. Two times. Right. So I that's not something I would play with. Like, you know, if this is really your dream, what you really want to do, I, I would be like, oh man. So a lot of people come to me and they're like, Man, I took it, I got a 35. You have to score a 50 to be competitive. 
If you yeah. don't, if you don't hit fifty points, man, your packet is gonna fall by the wayside. And, and I'm kind of trying to shoot for the the high sixties, really. Yeah. High oh 60s. yeah. You really. Oh, you really be killing it then. But I'm just yeah. saying, fifty will get you in the door. I don't. In my ten years, I never, or since the the sift has been in effect, I haven't had a guy to hit fifty or clear fifty that was like, man, I didn't get selected. Like I just, it hasn't happened. So that's in my mental mind. That's my benchmark. Just going off of what, like, all my guys hit fifty threes. I got a fifty one last year. Uh-huh. But they, you broke fifty. But you have to understand, you're graded on a bell curve. So, so you're you're competing. You're com- you're competing against other people taking the test that month. So. You get a bunch of mechanical, electrical engineers, and I'm telling you, if you, I'm telling you, do not understand the money you can make. You go to law enforcement, the FBI, CIA, they all got helicopters. And you, and you ex-military? Come on, man. And listen, and, and you know what? And here's the clincher. I know a guy that works three days a week, and these are not eight-hour days. He works in New York City. He makes 250 grand a year. And if I could have did it all over again, I would have flown helicopters. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they, they're not paying it because it's a specialized, it's, it's a skill set. Yeah. So if you're ex-military, you can go into law enforcement, you, you could be a harbor pilot. You Oh, my God. You could you could work for oil rig company, flying workers out and back, and that's like your job. You chilling. When you ain't moving workers, you just like, all right, Bob. Yeah, give me a call when you need me to pick somebody up. Hey, man, I'm looking at my career off. But it gets me excited thinking about this because this is what I want to do. And yeah. I'm so happy I found somebody to finally pass the same position and be willing to go ahead and work for me here. I tell, these new, I tell these new pilots, they ask me all the time. I tell them the same thing. I said, wow, I do okay. But I'm just like, <laughs> if I had a chance to do it all over again, and my buddy, man, he's he's living nice. He's living. He's living very like I'll do my cat. cat was, he's he's living very nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've only met like one, maybe two, maybe uh, retired uh, military pilots, and they're living uh pretty darn nice. Huh? Yeah, they do okay. But um, just imagine yeah, if you did your twenty, and you got your okay, retirement I'm- coming in. And you're just you just working just to stay. Oh, I'm retired. I just want to stay out the house, and I want to just fly a little bit. That's what most okay. of those. That's what those most of those twenty year vet pilots are doing. They're just like, yeah, I just like to get out the house, get away. And I'm from- hearing that those flight hours are really gonna rack up though. Like in the, in the in the military, if you're an aviator, like you're gonna have to work on getting your flight hours up. But in, in the end, it's really beneficial. And nah, you really you work- you'll be fine. I'm telling you, if you're moving troops, cargo. Cargo, that's really troop, troops and cargo. That's really the hour builders. Uh-huh. You know, if you're like, say you're like a attack helicopter pilot, you're probably planning a mission for twelve hours, and your mission might run two, <laughs> two uh-huh. hours. So it's two hours of airtime with twelve hours of planning. As uh-huh. as opposed to if you were a Chinook pilot, a Huey pilot. Uh, yeah, those are uh, t- like a t- transport. T- yeah, transport utility. You're moving okay. tanks. You're moving tanks. Okay, so you're you're you sling loading tanks or something like that, and that takes time. You know, you're moving howitzers or those artillery cannons. I don't know what you call them. I've never been in art- artillery, but they look the ones that launch those, those shells like pearl shells, like three miles or some shit. <laughs> uh-huh. Some you don't want to be on the business end of. That's <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I saw a fire, a firepower demonstration at um at Fort Dix. Oh, you know what? I, I'm actually in a field artillery unit right now, and uh, every day we do tables, and we we we're actually distro, so we we distribute the ammo to these guys uh, for, for them to fire, and we actually stay out there and watch the fire. It's crazy yeah. how some of those weapons you just hear like a, you just hear like a you hear like a thump, real quiet. Like, thump. 
<laughs> Thing here, bang, and the whole earth is shaking. Like, damn. Right, the whole earth. Yeah. <laughs> and you like, dang, I don't know where that thing went, wherever it ended up. I don't want to be on that side of the yeah. earth. Yeah. But that was All crazy. Right. Like, the guy, he, he launched, and you just hear a little, little puff of smoke, just a little, thoop. That's all you hear was thoop. And then, ah, I mean, the whole bleachers were just like, <laughs> so, yeah. Well, listen, I want to thank you for your time, and I'd like to thank you for subscribing to me. And um, continue watching videos. I have a, a couple SIF videos. I don't know if you've seen them all, but oh, like I'll, basic, I'll yeah, basic uh, helicopter controls and all that and everything, and just the aircraft pattern and all that and everything. So make sure you check them out. If you just type in K I E N O and then hyphen SIFT, uh -huh. these videos should pop up if you put them in on the suggestion box. Or oh, yeah. you could just go to my videos on my on my um. On my um, playlists, and you go to Kino, my channel. You go to my channel, go to videos, and you, you can just look at them. But every SIFT one is, it, it's, it's, it says SIFT on the video. So I encourage okay. you to look at all those. And, um, and I'm yeah. Okay, okay. Cool. And, and, and uh, like I told you, every Saturday and Sunday, there's a group session, 5 p.m. Eastern. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll be sure to join in, too. And anybody else that you know preparing for the SIF, make sure you tell them about me and um and, and have them subscribe to my channel. Oh, 100%. 100%. You already know. <laughs> All right. Hook a, hook, a brother, hook a brother up. I got you, bro. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, sir. All right. You have a great evening. All right. You, too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow, well that really uh, that was really good. We had CC checking in with us, um, and CC thanks. CC had some questions. I think I'm probably gonna do this every probably every Friday or Saturday evening, um, because that was some really good feedback, and um, you know um, we have somebody preparing for the um, sift and. Um, they had questions, and so, you know, I'll take some time out and answer your questions and stuff like that during the live stream. I have no problem with that. Um, so with that being said, I guess, man, I'm going to have to go do what I was planning to do this evening. I'm hungry. So listen, if you're taking the AFOQT, the Army SIFT, the United States Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard uh, Aviation Selection Test Battery, or OAR, or even if you're preparing for the ASVAB, if you really, really want to get the best score you can get, I've been preparing people for this test for 10 years. Um, you know, you guys have probably been struggling taking this test on your own. I'm not getting the score I want. And, you know, it's like, you know, you want, and especially for the officer programs, you only get a couple times to take it. Like the ASVAB, you can take as many times as you want. But the officer programs, no. You got like two or three attempts. Don't play with it. Doesn't have to be me. Find a tutor. You know, I just I guess I happen to be that guy on YouTube or whatever. But make sure that the tutor has a proven record. Don't let them just say because it, it, you got like a, what are these, Kaplan Academy or something like that. I saw something like, yeah, they charge two grand but they don't guarantee but they don't guarantee you pass like I was like wow that's that's the goal of that well look you can pay us two grand hell bring me a thousand <laughs> I'll get you through don't pay them two grand and I'm not saying it was Kaplan Academy it was some tutoring company and it's like two grand we don't guarantee you pass you give me a G you will pass. I'll see to it. So, well, that's all I have for you guys. I thank you guys for watching. Like I said, if you guys have any and any math help, if you're uh, having any issues with Federal Aviation Administration exams, hit me up. Um, I will be discussing a regular schedule where I will be doing live streams because I want to start doing them more often, but uh, that's it, man. Thanks for watching. Peace. Bang.